In this segment, we're going to find and learn how to do the steps in finding the molar mass of an unknown compound using a freezing point experiment. You can use a boiling point experiment, it doesn't matter, but we do freezing point. Of course, molar mass, the units is gold. Uh, the goal of the units is grams per mole. So that means we got to figure out for a given amount of grams how many moles goes with it. And we'll use the um, freezing point expression helps find that. Okay, so typically you're given the gram, so you just got to find that number or you weigh it out in the lab. So that's the front half of the equation. Then the second half is using the freezing point equation and the molality expression. <clears throat> when you multiply it uh, correctly, you can find out the moles, and then you can just plug that into the grams per mole, figure out the molar mass. Okay, so that's step three. Let's practice in a problem. This is like a, an owl problem or homework problem. It's similar to what would be done in lab 19. Not the exact same way, but it's the process. The freezing point of benzene in this problem is 5.500 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere. And then you can see in this problem, students uh, took 12 grams of an unknown compound and dissolved it, 277 grams of benzene. And the solution had a new freezing point that was lower. It always goes lower when you add something in. Can we figure out the molecular weight of the unknown compound? Well, what's great is there's the grams. So we've got the grams. We're halfway done. Now we just need to figure out how many moles goes with that 12 grams. And if you use the freezing point depression equation, LT equals KF times molality times the Van Hoff factor. But also remember that the change in freezing point is also can be found by just doing the final temperature minus initial. And when you do that, you get a negative 0.14 in this experiment, degrees Celsius. So we can just plug that back into the uh, freezing point depression for our delta T. We look up KF from a table for benzene because it's the solvent. So it's great because you don't need to know what the solute is. You don't need to know anything about that. That's multiplied by and the molality, we don't know the concentration. We're going to find that times uh, 1 because um, it says it's a non-volatile, non-electronic. So it doesn't split up. And so I is 1. And Hoff factor is 1. So now all we need to do is solve for molality. Divide both sides by negative uh, 5.12. Of course, you multiply by 1, so it doesn't change anything. And then you divide in as 0.159 molal, or moles per kilogram kilogram of solvent, right? So they tell us how much solvent is given, <clears throat> 277 grams divided by 1,000. That makes it 0 0.2770 kilograms. Just multiply that by the molality and the kilograms of solvent cancel out. You're left with the amount of moles. So you take the 12 grams divided by the number of moles that was associated with it in the solution, and you get grams per mole, 272 grams per mole. That's the molar mass of the solvent. Not the solvent, the solute. And so we we're able to find the unknown molar mass. What's great about this <clears throat> is this experiment is easily done in the lab. And there's three important pieces of data to collect. The mass of the solute, the unknown that you add, just use the balance. You weigh it out. Put it into your styrofoam cup calorimeter. Then you got to figure out the change in freezing point. You should know what it is um, before you add the solute. And then... What is it after you add the solute? And you can use a thermometer for both those experiments. Then lastly, you're going to calculate or find, you'll actually in the lab, we'll find the total mass of the solution. And since you know the uh, mass of a solute, you can easily do a subtraction and figure out the mass of the solvent. So you need the mass of the solvent, mass of the solute, freezing point change, and then you can calculate the molar mass. That's a nice general chemistry type of experiment, but I mean, it can be done with outside of general chemistry. So I hope this is helpful, and you can remember the steps in finding the molar mass of an unknown.